at Boeing's Apache Helicopter Factory in Mesa, Arizona. 160 workers have been wearing their fingers to the bone, building high-tech weaponry from scratch by hand. The airframe's taking shape, and the tail's in place. Now it's time for this mean machine to get its power. The Apache isn't just tough, it's fast and stealthy enough to reach the enemy before the enemy knows it's there. When fully loaded, the Apache can weigh over 8 tons, yet it can accelerate from 0 to 60 in just 4.6 seconds. And it can continue that acceleration to reach a top speed of 200 miles an hour, all while climbing 3,000 feet every minute. To be that fast and that strong requires some serious thrust, and it comes from some serious jet engines. Built off-site by General Electric, the T700GE701C turboshaft engines produce a whopping 1,700 horsepower each. I equate the, uh, the first day that I got into Apache, and I was going like from a VW Bug to like a Porsche 911. Uh, and the thing that I noticed too, when you when you crank up the, uh, the twin turbo engines, uh, just the, just the power you feel. Uh, even before that, the uh, auxiliary power unit to bring the generators online that had more horsepower than the aircraft I'd been flying previously. To maximize speed and reliability, this chopper comes with two engines mounted in pods on either side of the airframe. Two engines reduces the chance of a single enemy strike disabling the Apache. The aircraft can also operate in most flight environments and combat mission loads with single engine. So if you're going to lose an engine, either from failure or from uh, hostile fire, the aircraft can still fly safely and get the crew home. Workers add fuel lines, wiring, and sensors to the bare shell of the fuselage, which will hold the engine in place. The helicopter is now ready for its power. Weighing nearly half a ton each, the engines must be carefully lifted into place using the overhead crane. The engine is so crucial, it has been designed to easily be replaced. Just three bolts hold it in place, and mechanics can exchange a damaged unit for a new one in under an hour. For an Apache at war, speed of maintenance on the ground can be as vital to the success of the mission as speed in the air. Each engine turns a drive shaft, which is connected to a simple gearbox. The gearbox shifts the angle of rotation around 90 degrees and passes the power onto the transmission. The transmission transmits the power to the main rotor assembly and the second long shaft leading to the tail rotor. But this 1700 horsepower engine has a problem. It's hot. And heat can be locked onto by ground-to-air missiles. Missiles that could destroy the Apache. So. To cool the engine and reduce the amount of heat escaping from the helicopter, workers install a unique exhaust system known as the Black Hole Infrared Suppression System. Vents mix cool outside air with the red hot exhaust. Inside the vents, this hot air is passed over a material known as low Q. The low Q absorbs any remaining heat before firing the air out and away from the craft at an angle. The heat haze may look strong, but within just 30 feet of the helicopter, the temperature of the exhaust will be lower than that given off by a household hairdryer.
reached station 12. It's time to give this chopper a lift. It's time to fit the rotors. The helicopter rotor system is designed to generate both the aerodynamic lift force that supports the weight of the helicopter and the thrust which counters aerodynamic drag in forward flight. Each main rotor will be mounted on a vertical mast over the top of the helicopter. A swash plate at the base of the rotor block connects the rotor to the flight controls to vary the pitch of the blades. Unlike fixed-wing aircraft, helicopters stay aloft by spinning their wings at high speed above the craft. The Apache doesn't really fly, it beats the air into submission. Each 20-foot long wing, or rotor blade, consists of five stainless steel arms, called spars, surrounded by a fiberglass skeleton. The trailing edge is covered with sturdy composite graphite material, like the lead in a pencil, while the leading edge is made of titanium, strong enough to cut through the air and withstand brushes with trees and map of the earth flying. The rotor block is carried into place on the overhead gantry crane. The block must be strong enough to carry the four separate blades, each weighing in excess of 600 pounds and rotating at up to 400 times a minute. The large block at the base of each blade contains flexible elastomeric bearings that enables each blade to flex independently this increases the agility and efficiency of the helicopter in the air. The rotor mast is attached to the airframe at eight points, with the drive shaft running through it. This makes sure that forces incurred during flight are conveyed to the body of the Apache rather than the engine or gearing. The rotor mast is attached to the airframe at eight points, with the drive shaft running through it. Coming up, it's time for this Apache to find its way around with some seriously high-tech sensors. But what use are sensors without some serious firepower? <laughs>